This so conference we'll call... will now be recorded. Okay, thank you for the starting of the recording. We'll go ahead and call the Board of uh, Commissioners for Lake Stevens Sewer District to order. It is Thursday, October 22nd, 2020, and we're going to call it uh, 0901 hours. Uh, before we get started, I'm going to read a little preamble that we normally do. Commissioners, staff, and citizens, since this is a remote meeting, some initial comments are appropriate at this time. As required by the governor's March 24th proclamation, the Lake Stevens Sewer District is holding its commissioner meetings remotely using the GoTo uh, meeting platform. While this is not our normal, uh, we would like to be able to ensure the continuity of business operations. Members of the public who are participating, we are very grateful for your support and patience while we work through this interim way of doing business. Members of the public have been invited to join via virtual meeting format, GoToMeeting. The public comments section of our agenda will be handled in the following ways. First, comments or questions that were emailed to the Sewer District customer service or otherwise received sufficiently in advance of the meeting will be read during that public forum. Secondly, during the meeting, anyone wishing to comment during public forum may use the chat box feature and you may and you will be provided with the opportunity to comment if you wish. Board members, uh, we're going to take attendance by calling your name this morning. Please indicate whether you can clearly hear me and others on the line. Uh, we'll do our best to speak one at a time. So the uh, note taker, of course, this is being recorded, can take the, the minutes. So, Commissioner Koshi, are you here? I'm here and I hear you loud. Perfect, thank you. So we'll go ahead and start. Uh, by doing that, we'll call to order. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. So please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, agenda this fine morning. I know that there is a request to just take some things out of order. So with that being said, I'd make a motion to, to um, amend the agenda. We would move down a new business E board positions um, right after the approval process. So it kind of takes it out of the way since um, Commissioner Lowe, uh, who was our president, has resigned from the board, and so the remaining commissioners were just trying to put into sync the positions. So, with that, I'll I also had a, I'm sorry, I had a question for legal counsel. Um, so, for the Centennial Short Plat, we did not receive the originals in the mail in time for the board meeting. Um, would it be okay to approve the DEA? pending signatures and pending uh, receiving the original DEA in the mail, Brad? Yeah, I think you could, the commissioners could approve it as long as it's been reviewed by the uh, uh, the uh, engineering staff and the district staff subject to receipt of the final signatures. Uh, they could do it uh, with that uh, 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 condition. So. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Perfect. And that was Jonathan. Just to just to clarify, that was for Centennial Short Plat DEA. Okay, perfect. Um, so with that being said, it has been moved and seconded. With that amendment, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It has passed. So the agenda moves forward. So we have 3.5 or four, depending on where you wanna stand on this agenda this morning, but um, board position. So I believe we have a, a president uh, role to fill. I'd nominate uh, Commissioner Lawrenson for that uh, role. I'll accept that nomination and I'll uh, nominate uh, Commissioner Koshi for secretary. And I'll accept that. Yes, but hey. <laughs> well, that being said, any discussion? I don't think there's any real campaign speeches needing to be made this fine morning. So with that being said, I'll call for a vote. All in favor for the, the board positions? Aye. Aye. It has carried. Thank you, everybody. Um, 
Let's move on down to our consent agenda items. Any questions, comments, concerns? Nope, I'd make a motion that we approve consent uh, items A through I. It has been moved. I will second that. A call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion has carried for consent items. Moving down to Jay, we will turn this over to the Assistant General Manager for the Centennial Short Flight DEA, along with our engineering uh, folks, Leah and Barry. All right, the Centennial Short Plat is nine ERUs worth of uh, commercial um, development. Um, the reason this developer extension agreement has to come before the board is it will have a late summer basin associated with it. So it's not as typical uh, standard template. Um, district staff has uh, District staff, engineering, and legal have all reviewed the developer extension agreement and recommend it for approval. Oh, you're muted. Sorry about that. Any other further discussion on that? I hear no. Oh, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion we approve the Centennial Short Plat DEA extension. I will second that uh, motion and we'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the motion has carried. We'll just um, look forward to the final documents once they do arrive. We'll move down to the public forum. I will ask uh, Tara, have we received any comments uh, via email or previously? We have not. No comments from the public on that. So this is an opportunity for anybody in the audience who would like to address the Board of Commissioners on any subject that may be for us or coming up. Please uh, let us know. I'm going to take that as hearing none because I haven't seen anybody's hands going up or frantically trying to push the unmute button. So with that being said, we will move on down to the old business. Uh, item number six, old business, discussion regarding scope and fee for the 2022 top plan. All right. So um, the district district staff met with Grant Osborne for a, and uh, met with Grant Osborne to uh, conduct a scoping meeting to kind of throw some uh, boundaries around what we're looking for in our comprehensive plan, our 2022 comprehensive plan. And uh, the scope that's attached to the agenda packet is what was uh, concluded from that meeting. Um, we've broken it down into 10 items. Uh, those items are kind of uh, what the meat and potatoes of the scope will be. Um, which is generally project management. Um, sorry. Uh, getting background information on kind of a snapshot of where we are and then uh, get all the information we need to be able to forecast from now until essentially build out as, um, in areas like land use, planning, um buildable land um, and the comprehensive plan or cip projects that we've done thus far um the third area is a uh, collection system evaluation part of that evaluation is going to be ground truthing our our flow models um, with some flow monitoring. We're going to install six flow monitors in the collection system during the wet weather to get a better, uh, a better assessment as to what our I and I rate really is. I think we've, we've used flows that lift stations and the treatment plant to generalize the 1100 gallons per acre per day I and I rate, but we want, uh, we want to ground truth that. Um, the fourth item 
is a treatment plan evaluation. So this is kind of where the uh, there's going to be a heavy focus on the treatment plan as far as testing and uh, and evaluating current processes, current performance, and um, and looking to see if those processes can be improved to get better uh, better uh, performance out of the treatment plant without any upgrades, as well as looking at potential for incremental upgrades rather than the one thirty-five million dollar project, uh, and then. Uh, working out timing scheduling for those upgrades if we can do incremental upgrades um, and part of that process is also looking ahead to we know that the regulations from ecology are not going to get less stringent so trying to look at forecasting where those um, where our limits might be in the near future and well into the future and then uh, also part of that is to start the support we'll need um, as far as engineering documents if uh, incremental upgrades are going to be plausible getting the uh, supporting material that we'll need to be able to push that off to ecology to try to uh, get permitting uh, we're also looking at biosolids treatment and management evaluation. Um, and we're doing a kind of a, a light look into the evaluation of water reuse. Um, and then comes the financial evaluation. Um, look at uh, how to fund all the capital projects that come up as a result of all the other evaluations. And we've also asked to look at some potentials for alternative billing methods, especially commercial billing rates and stuff, see what uh, other people are doing and uh, and see if there's a better way for us to do it. Um, and then, um, yeah, there will be public participation. So there'll be some public meetings with regards to, uh, uh, I guess, status updates on the uh, on the comprehensive plan. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's essentially it. Barry, you can if you have anything to add. Yeah, if I could just add um, very briefly that this plan is is more than what you did in your last comprehensive plan in the sense that instead of just looking at the collection system and improvements that were necessary there, we're also scoped this plan to also meet the, the requirements of an engineering report facility study for the wastewater treatment plant, which would be required for any changes to that particular operation and modifications that we might be looking at there. So the the intent of this is to upgrade the collection system and the monitoring that's there, but also to prepare you so that if you um, if you want to revise or we need to change what we're doing at the facility, at the wastewater treatment plant facility itself, you wouldn't have to go through a separate facility planning document for that upgrade of the treatment plant. So this incorporates both of those items. Um, the scope works out as far as hours to about 50% for the collection system and about 50% of the hours for the wastewater treatment plant, which also includes the biosolids and the water reuse. So just so you're aware of how that's being packaged. Um, the And so it puts it um, on approximately the same order of magnitude of your last uh, the collection system by itself is is about the same dollar wise as what you had before, but the reason this is more expensive than the previous one that you did with with the previous consultant is because we're also doing the facility plan for the wastewater treatment plant. So, the, just trying to anticipate some questions as to why there's a change in cost compared to what was done, um, your, uh, so, you know, several years ago with your previous one. It's because it's doing more as far as the engineering report. So that's the only clarification I would like to add. Um, the tasks that John outlined are, are correct. So if you got any questions, I'm happy to answer those as well.
So I'm just, is this going to put us more in line if we were to do something like a plant upgrade in 2025? I think we spoke years ago about, I mean, if there was that need, um, this will encompass what we need to make sure that we don't have to go out separately later if, if, that, if that need did show that the population growths were there, that we had to do a phase, you know, additional phase to the plant itself. So it's not quite so much the population growth, but what the actual improvements would be at the plant. So if we change the operation of the plant or we change the membrane system that we have, or we change some of those different things, that needs to be reviewed and approved by ecology in what's called a facility plan. And so this would be that facility plan that ecology would take a look at and your, or your wastewater treatment staff can can ch chime in on this as well because before that could actually be completed we would need to make sure that ecology agreed with it with that and if there is any re-rating possible so one that's one of the things we've talked about is can we change the capacity of the treatment plant as far as its permits uh, allowed capacity and that could be through changes in the way that they operate it. It could be changes in what the type of membrane system they've got or a number of different things. That would also have to be approved by ecology and this provides the vehicle for doing that. So that it's really, the, the main difference is the focus on the treatment plant. Perfect, no, it just seems to be in line that we are, you know, really kind of taking a very proactive uh, step towards this because there's going to be a lot of things coming down in the future especially when we're talking of uh, what ecology has for some of the discharge requirements that they want so no perfect i appreciate it thank you we've heard from you know our sessions in wazwad and so forth some estimates or some guesses on where ecology is going to come down in terms of discharge new discharge requirements and so forth from our perspective has that has that been any more nailed down or do we kind of do a best case, worst case, likely case scenario when we go and evaluate the plant? The, the answer to that question is it has not been nailed down. Um, there's still a lot of discussion going on on that and it's it's scientifically or technically extremely complex. It is not a simple answer of, of just looking at pounds per day or, or whatever whatever the limits happen to be. Um, so we are looking at this to be able to meet what we anticipate are likely requirements for those. And it really has mostly to do with nutrient treatment and nutrient removal within the discharge. Um, and so without going too technical on that, right now you're doing okay in that regard, but not the, not a high enough level of treatment to meet what may be the new discharge requirement. So there would need to be changes um, in the future if those permit requirements are there. This plan will look at that as well and how we can meet that with the different either processes or equipment or various things like that. Yep. And Caitlin Dwyer has been sitting in on all the stakeholder meetings between other plants and ecology trying to trying to uh, pin that down. She may be able to speak to a lot of that but yeah caitlin's been very involved in all those meetings with ecology we're actually um working with Edmonds. Edmonds has been uh kind of hit already and it's uh like barry said it's so vast and unknown and uncertain and jeff clark former uh general manager at alderwood is uh elbow deep in this and he sends us emails on a regular basis and really it's it's the unknown none of us know where it is and we've had many many conversations with Edmonds, and i've asked caitlin to be sure to participate in that so we are a little bit more prepared when it does come our way thank you Well, perfect. Um, so, do you want to? You need a, mo uh, a motion just to authorize staff to proceed with the scope and fee for the 2022 comp plan, Jonathan. Uh, just uh, this was just to answer any questions about the scope, and then uh, yeah, there's a contract amendment after in the next items, but uh, the the 
fee for this scope is uh, not to exceed $344,843. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no, I saw that in the new business when I was reading that. I just didn't know if you if you wanted us to authorize anything. It's old business uh, discussion in that. So we will. If there's no other discussion on it, um, we can move to the new business. We shall do that. So first item up is A, which is the com comp plan contact amendment number twenty eight with Gray and Osborne. We'll let you guys. Oh. Yeah, I, if I could just add one really quick comment, um, we prepared this um, amendment prior to Mariah Lowe's resignation, and so her name is on the contract that we have signed and provided. So, whatever the district needs to do or or legal needs to do, we can we can either revise, you know, take that off. You can line it out. It's fine with us either way, but that's up to the district and the and the legal counsel as, as to what needs to happen and who would need to sign that would be part of would be part of your motion. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention that that when we prepared this, we hadn't anticipated that particular wrinkle um, in in the process. And th Brad, this is Brad. Brad. Yeah, the contract should be revised so that it reflects the the current uh, president's uh, uh, name and. And so if if uh, uh, Gray and Osborne prepared the signature page, that, that should be revised to, to substitute uh, the current president's name. Okay. Brad, can that be a line out or do you need an actual new wet signature? Well, it, it's, uh, um, I mean, if it can be modified with a white out or, or something like that, it's that's fine. But uh, 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 if it's, if whatever the logistics are, if it's difficult to get a, another signature, then then white it out. If it's not difficult to get another signature, then then uh, get a clean page. Okay. And we'll, it, we'll, it, what, yeah, we'll ahead. we'll do that. We'll go ahead and and get a clean page and get you a new original signatures. But um, the district can you know move forward on authorization on however they want to have signed that. Um, so let us know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it can certainly be approved today. So. Okay, well, that's probably either way. It doesn't make a difference if we can just take a pen and scratch it out either way. Um, I think once the signature is, is placed on it, it'll move forward. So with that, I would entertain a motion if... Yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve the comp plan contract of amendment number 28 with Gray and Osborne. So I'll go ahead and second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It has carried. We'll move on down to resolution number 985, which is a transfer of funds from the capital expenditures. So this is uh, resolution 985. We're going to, by board resolution, we need the commissioners to authorize us to transfer $1,238,979.17 from fund 46 to fund 58. And what that would allow is timely payments of capital costs that we've incurred on 91st Avenue um, sewer repair, the City Works software, uh, field service trucks, Grace Lane overlay, lift station 1C electrical design, uh, lift station 22 order control, the Southeast Regional lift station, Vactor decamp facility, the Vernon Business Center parking lot, the Vernus, Vernon Business Center structural repair project, and uh, we would want those being taken out from Fund 58 per the authorization of the board. Okay, everybody else. Um, questions on yep, this one? Yep, no, perfect. So with that being said, I'll authorize, or I'll make a motion that we approve resolution number 985, transfer the funds for capital expenditures. I'll second. Is moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It has carried. Uh, we'll move on down to the notice of check numbers out of sequence. Okay. This is also just a housekeeping item. Uh, we had to uh, we had to void a check. Check number eight zero zero two. We had to reissue it with eight zero one two. 
uh, was made out to the vendor's old name. They were not able to cash the check, so we've reissued it. We also issued check number 8011 uh, to an employee as part of a separation from the district, and it was done outside of a regular board meeting. Okay. okay. Any discussion on that? Here you go. Okay. Entertain a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, recognize the uh, change of uh, check sequence numbers and the cancellations as discussed. Okay, I'll second that. Go ahead and call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It has carried. Uh, let's move on down to discussion item D, which is a discussion regarding the vacancy of the District 2 Commissioner in position number two. I want it noted that I continue to chew through you, commissioners, um, as I sit in this. <laughs> yes, 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 you do. Um, <laughs> so I know that um, we have put out uh, to the general public, it has been posted on the web page uh, for the district. Um, it was put also on some social media, from my understanding. Um, we are moving forward in the selection process that uh, the Board of Commissioners are authorized to do under RCW. Um, our anticipation is to have that seat fulfilled sooner rather than later, meaning before the end of the year. We are hoping to be able to have a final selection uh, in the month of November. So the the uh, Opening period for anybody who is interested to drop a letter of interest is open until Friday. I think uh, close of business, which is the 30th of October. And so, um, depending on how many applicants we get, uh, the list may be worked down. But uh, we'll invite those that that uh, we see that may, you know, offer a lot to the district and the and the general public to come and interview with us. So, and we'll make a selection. I don't know if Commissioner Koshi has anything he wants to say on that. Nope, just looking forward to the interviews and uh, hopefully we get uh, lots of lots of interest so there's lots of qualified uh, applicants. Exactly, I would I would agree. So anybody else have anything in staff, legal? We cover everything. Uh, the only thing I would add, uh, Commissioner, is the the process under RCW 42.12.070 uh, uh, provides the commissioners a, a window of 90 days from the date of resignation uh, to fill the position. So you've, you've got that time period. Exactly, thank you. Um, we, we, we hope to be able to get it filled before that time because if, if the Board of Commissioners cannot make that decision, it would then be uh, deferred to the Snohomish County Council who would make the decision. But I think that um, between the members present in this organization currently, we should be pretty good at selecting somebody. So that being said, we've already covered the board positions for the remaining of the year. Uh, we can move on down to the reports by our managers. So we will start with the general manager. Okay. Uh, wow. We have been crazy busy, a lot of stuff going on. Um, one of the things I, I, if you haven't driven by the parking lot, it's almost done. It's absolutely beautiful. We have a little bit of housekeeping things. John may touch on that. And the boardroom is actually looking like a boardroom and will be eventually ready for you whenever we go back to live meetings. I uh, went to, uh, got a letter from Heritage Bank. We have three accounts at Heritage Bank. They are closing their Lake Stevens office. And we, Mickey and I met with First Financial Northwest. They're located on the west side of uh, nine over there near Ace Hardware. And we will be transferring our three accounts there. There's a petty cash account, an Aflac account, and then a cash deposit account that we have. And I met with Heritage Bank yesterday, they're closing in January, and they recommended the same bank to us as well. We would be putting money into a money market account, which would earn right now at this time, just a little bit less than a quarter percent interest. Uh, but we would 
be seeing um, a lot less, uh, you know, minimal fees, and we would see easier transactions. An example, the way Heritage Bank operates right now, is I'm the only one who can cash the petty cash checks, even though they have all the information for, uh, you know, the accounting team over here at First Financial. Uh, they would take Teresa's information, an example, and she'd be able to cash the petty cash checks. Those are usually very small, de minimis. I think I got $46 yesterday for petty cash. So um, we had been looking already for some sort of bank to transfer to. Uh, I personally like First Financial. They're a local bank. They're involved in the community. They know who we are. Going to a larger commercial bank, we tend to pay more fees. And uh, staying smaller and staying local is something that I personally prefer to do. Uh, once that we start moving forward, I will just let you all know. And one of the things we'll have to do is, uh, I believe Dan as president will put you on as a signer on one of the accounts. Mariah currently is. So we'll be working with you on some customer information. So I, I guess what I would be looking for is I want a motion from the board that you're comfortable with me moving forward to First Financial and moving mm -hmm. the funds from Heritage Bank to First Financial Northwest. Okay. Entertain a motion if. Yeah, that's no problem. I have, uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, transfer the three friends uh, noted um, to from Heritage uh, Bank to was it First Federal? First Financial Northwest, and this is honestly okay. this process part of the bookkeeping, just so they can have it in the meeting minutes. So First Financial Northwest Bank. Yep. First Financial Northwest Bank. Okay, I'll go ahead and second that. Any other discussion on it? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. It is carried. Thank you. Anything else, Tanya? I think that's all that I can think of right now. And we go do ahead. have it posted, like you, like you said, the commissioner position on the Facebook and on our website. And I think that's about it. All right. Thank you. Um, Assistant General Manager. You're muted. Oh, this day. Um, all right. So 234.7 connection fees paid so far this year and uh, 338 permits issued. Uh, Last week, Cruz built some sound barriers around the fans at Lift Station 22, um, alleviating the noise complaints that we've been getting there. Uh, we've got fans that are uh, uh, three fans that were louder than we expected. So um, the crews did a great job building insulating barriers around those fans. Um, and we were able to reduce the decibel level outside of the lift station by 13 decibels. So um, it's great work they did. Um, been working with Jim and Brian on uh, kind of management goals and stuff to look into or look forward to um, hitting the budget cycle and moving forward to next year, um, which has been great working with both of them on moving that forward and uh that's that's all i got perfect thank you treatment plant jim treatment plant thank you and hello commissioners uh so far the wet weather where our flow has gone from 2.3 mgd to 2.7 and uh, we've been working a lot with Jonathan and Brian, and they're doing a great job on monitoring and trying to determine exactly where some of these wet weather flows or I and I are entering our system. So that's all good. Uh, we participate with the Department of Ecology. Caitlin's been doing a great job as well as Jonathan. It looks like there is going to be um, some sort of new regulations on nutrient reduction. And so uh, we're participating and trying to stay. Uh, in the loop as far as that and we'll see how that goes and we may have to have a visit uh, with our permit writer uh, Jonathan and Caitlin and maybe Jeff and I 
we've been evaluating the needs of uh, the facility, not only mechanically as we enter the winter and in, we're getting close to 10 years old, but uh, also we had a departed employee. So we're working with Jonathan and Tanya um, just to look at that and see if there are needs, different needs, if succession planning wants to play a part, et cetera. So uh, we do, that's going on. And uh, as far as the Department of Ecology, not only Caitlin, but I want to mention GNO has uh, been a good participant of that and they're obviously paying a lot of attention. And so it's been great working with them. And I'm entering my two months here, going by really fast. And I want to tell you guys, I really enjoy it here. It's a high performing team. Uh, Tanya and Jonathan have both been really nice to me, which I appreciate and are great to work with. And the team down here is just awesome from Jeff, uh, Dwayne, Ron, Travis, uh, it's really Kurt. It's a great place to work. And I appreciate that you guys let me come here. Thank you. Well, thank you. We're very happy that you're here as part of the team. Um, yeah, we're hearing great things. So thank everybody in, in the, the organization. I'm really, really happy how we're really coming together uh, and doing a lot of things. Um, it's I'm, I'm very happy to be associated with the district. Any other questions for any of the other staff before we move on down to city report? I don't see anybody, but we do have council <laughs> member Peter Shagan. If he'd like to speak on behalf, I didn't see the city administrator in the in the list, so you're up. Yes, sir. I don't I don't know where everyone is this morning, but maybe they're enjoying the sunshine outside with the brisk weather. But anyway, thank you. Um, nothing substantial to report on, however. I did uh, hear last night, we are expecting a decision from the hearing examiner on the Costco project towards the end of the month here. So hopefully we'll get a direction on that um, shortly so we can start uh, moving forward, fingers crossed. So anyway, that's all to report at this point. Appreciate uh, being in attendance at your meeting. Thank you. Excuse me, Commissioner Lorenzen. Um, yes. I do wanna say that we have heard from the entity that is looking at the wastewater treatment plant the former wastewater treatment plant and we are they are looking for some sort of boat or something they reached out to me earlier i think it was like monday they're going to probably start working on their core samples sampling uh this week or maybe into next week so just to let you know that they are moving forward and and working on the core sampling did, did you say they're looking for some kind of boat a boat to get out into one of the ponds, the lagoons. So they asked if we had one, but we don't have it. So okay. I think, yeah. That's probably yeah. like a little road boat or something. Yeah. So if we don't, they won't, they'll just do it in the land. They won't get into the ponds. So. Yeah. Hey, you know, be a nice swim. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you uh, for that and uh, appreciate the update there, Councilman. Um, I know that they are going to work. I drove by this morning, it looked like there was a track hoe taking down one of the homes there at South Lake Stevens Road 9 that um, used to be there for a very long, long time. Uh, the only reason I kind of look is, well, I grew up across the street from that place, but that's a different story for a different time. Um, commissioner's reports, Commissioner Koshi. Yep, I have nothing, nothing here other than appreciate the work everybody's doing. Um, but uh, yeah, nothing else to uh, nothing else to share at this point. Okay, and I would reiterate that uh, same sentiment. Not much to share other than thank you everybody for the hard work. Um, it, it really shows. And uh, as we prepare for the winter months, I know there's going to be a little bit of a water flow uh, coming in, so I know that we'll be on top of it. With that. Um, I don't know if we have an executive session for a few minutes. Um, I would like to go into an executive session, please. Okay, so there will be an executive session. I would say probably last no longer than 15 minutes, if I'm correct. Um, I'll look at your lack of nod side to side saying that I'm probably speaking well. I'll let the legal go ahead and uh, read the preamble for that and then i don't expect a uh decision to follow we'll just come out of executive session and just end the regular meeting so with that i'll turn it to legal to 
Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. The, the commission will now recess into executive session. The purpose of the executive session is to discuss contract negotiations. Uh, and as the commission president has indicated, it is not anticipated that there will be action after the executive session based upon the discussion in executive session, nor is it anticipated there will be an announcement after the executive session. The executive session is anticipated to, to last no longer than 15 minutes. And at the conclusion of the executive session, the uh, commission will return to regular session and the meeting will be adjourned. <laughs> Are we okay? I think so. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bing, bing, bing. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so the Board of Commissioners are back in regular session and entertaining a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. It has moved. Well, all in favor, aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.